If you're like me, you love cars, but you don't have a lot of money to spend on them. Well, fret not, because today we're looking at 10 cars under $10,000. So let's lay some ground rules. First, the car can't cost more than $10,000, duh. I only say this because there are cases of where you'll see cars that normally go for more than $10,000 at less than $10,000, but these aren't typical, and it's not really fair for me to put them in this video. Second, I'm gonna show you some cars available for a lot less than 10K, so you can use the leftover money to mod your ride and make something really special. For pricing research, I use Craigslist in four different cities around the US, LA, Denver, Nashville, and New Jersey. And keep in mind that you'll probably be able to find at least one of these cars at any price point under $10,000, but the price will reflect the condition. These are just some basic guidelines for what you should expect to pay for a decent example. We'll go in ascending order from cheapest to most expensive. For under $1,000, all you're gonna find are cars that need a lot of work, but that doesn't mean you can't find something fun. Case in point, this 2000 Plymouth Neon I found for 500 bucks. Hear me out, it might be a neon, but these things are low key fun as hell. Whoa, wow, that guy's going so fast. And this one is a manual. Apparently, if you're gonna get a neon, you gotta go with a manual because the automatic transmissions are really, really bad. And I can't stress enough how difficult it is to find good cars for under a thousand bucks. Moving on, things don't get much better at $2,000, but there is one car that immediately comes to mind if you wanna have cheap fun, the Ford Crown Victoria. You get a V8, rear wheel drive, comfy seats, they last forever, and you can mod the hell out of these things with Mustang parts to make them go around turns real good. My friend Austin did it, and it's pretty sweet. You can find Crown Vicks for under two grand all day on Craigslist. The only problem is they get pretty bad mileage, and if you buy a Vic, you have to hang out with Vic people, and they're kind of weird. Hi, I'm weird. Okay, the big three grand. I think if you're in high school or college, this is a realistic amount of money to save up with a full-time job. Case in point, this 2001 BMW 325i with a five-speed for 2,500 bucks. Sounds pretty good, right? Well, it's also a German car with 192,000 miles, so buyer beware. For $3,000, I think I have a better idea. The Civic. Two to $3,000 is the land of the Honda Civic. At this price, the cars you're gonna find are gonna have pretty high mileage, but it's not hard to find some that have been really well maintained. Another good option in this price range is the Acura Integra. Very similar, but looks a little cooler in my opinion, but you gotta be careful because Civics get stolen. Hey, Nolan here. Uh, this Civic was actually stolen about 12 hours after we shot this episode. He got it back though, so it's okay. If something does break, OEM parts are super affordable and working on Hondas is really easy. Sure, your friends might call you a ricer, but you'll have the last laugh when they ask you for a ride after drifting their 240SX into a wall for the third time this year. Okay, so $4,000 is when things really start getting serious for fun, cheap cars. You can find Miatas all day between three and $4,000. Let me confess something to you. I used to be a Miata hater. I used to say that funny hairdresser joke and buy into every other tired cliche. But that was until I drove one. There's a reason people love the Miata. It's because it's freaking great. At this price range, you're looking at late 90s, early aughts, NA and NB Miatas. They're gonna have a lot of mileage, but like the Civic, the Miata is pretty bulletproof. $5,000, we're halfway there. Hopefully you're getting some ideas. For 5,000, there's some really fun stuff if you're willing to dig for it. The one car that stands out to me in this price range is the first and second gen Mini Cooper S. Like the Miata, the Mini Cooper is another car I think has an unfair stigma. People think it's a chick car. It's cute, it's slow and practical. But I think the public is wrong because I don't believe in chick cars. I believe in cool cars. The Cooper S is cool. And I'll tell you why, the two words, it's supercharged. That's right, from 2002 to 2006, the Mini Cooper S came with a 1.6 liter supercharged engine with a six speed manual as standard. It's awesome, I don't need to say anything else. Something to keep in mind, these things 
aren't super reliable, and since they're basically BMWs, the maintenance might be a little pricey, and apparently they're pain in the ash to work on. But on the other hand, supercharger. You can get one of these for under five grand, no problem. I'm thinking about saving up and doing it. At $6,000, it's kind of a weird mishmash of nicer examples of cars we've already talked about, and less nice, more expensive stuff we'll talk about later. But one thing that is a consistent is an American classic, the Jeep, TJ, and YJ Wrangler. This is probably my biggest oddball pick so far, and I stand by it. Other cars on my list are fine little sports cars for zipping around town, but what if you don't care about that? Wranglers aren't the fastest or flashiest, but I promise, if you test drive one of these with the top off, you'll understand. Jeeps offer a different kind of fun. At this price point, you're not gonna find a super cherry Wrangler, but come on, it's a Jeep. It doesn't need to be pretty, it just needs to run. You know, the more cars I talk about on this list, I want every one. For seven grand, I think there's a lot to love in both the Infiniti G35 and Nissan 350Z. They're basically the same thing. Now, obviously, this is not a $7,000 car, but with that extra $3,000, you can make yours your own. The Infiniti looks all grown up and, hmm, I can't wait to start my mutual fund, hmm. While the Z looks like it just drove off the set of Tokyo Drift. Personally, I think the Infiniti looks a tad better, but it really comes down to personal preference. You can fight me in the comments. The differences don't end there though. Inside, the G35 has a back seat, while the Z only has two seats. Apparently, the trunk is bigger on the G35 too, but you're not buying one of these to haul stuff. You're buying one of these to haul ass. It's a joke. The Z has the G35 slightly beat in the handling department as it is lighter, but the disparity between the two isn't super noticeable. Also, quick side note, the G35 also came in a sedan with the six speed, and that's awesome. And now I want one of these too. Now that we're in the $8,000 range, I think it's pretty safe to start looking at Subarus. Yes, it's time. At this price point, you can expect the WRX to have around 140,000 miles. Now, I'm not a SUBI expert by any means, but I think that's when the head gasket starts to go. Regardless, seven to eight is a really nice price point for these cars. That's probably not really what they're worth, but the SUBI tax is a universal thing across the country. You gotta make some money back on all those vapes you bought, I guess. So if you really wanna scratch that rally itch and make all your bros jealous, I think you should realistically expect to pay that much. They won't be the nicest examples, and you're probably not gonna find any STIs in that price point, but they won't be total piles either. If you have nine grand burning a hole in your pocket and you want something fun, I say get an AMG. Imagine how sick you'll look rolling up to work in this AMG C32. Sure, it doesn't have a V8 like a real AMG. I'm only half kidding. But people can't tell the difference, okay? And that's all that matters. How about this S55? It's black, it's cool. I don't care if these things are taking time bombs that cost more than a year of rent. It says AMG on the back and that's all that matters. $9,000 AMGs are out there. Beware that they're gonna probably break. So what is the most fun you can buy for $10,000? Easy, Honda S2000. Yes, I'm gonna end my list with another Honda, but I don't care. Sure, a $10,000 S2K is gonna have a lot of miles on it and it's not gonna be in perfect condition, but that doesn't matter. In my time, I've driven a lot of cars, I've ridden and even more, and the S2000 is one of my absolute favorites. There really is nothing like being in one of those things revving to 9,000 RPM. <laughs> So obviously that's not every car in the zero to $10,000 range. I have some honorable mentions, which I will now do in one take in no particular order. Lexus SC300, SC400, IS300, Old Taurus Show, Porsche Boxster, Toyota MR2 and MR2 Spider, Fiat 500 to Barth, Volkswagen GTI, Volvo 240, BMW Z3, Corvette, Ford Focus SVT, and Mazda Speed 3. If I forgot to mention a car that you can get for under $10,000, that would be a good investment. I obviously did. Let me know in the comments. Hopefully this list has given you some good ideas. Now get out there and spend some money. Good for the economy.